All right, folks, here we go, folks. Sleep percent with a Z cheat. Well, not sleeping with a actual Z cheat, but just good about sleeping and doing the Z cheat, and that's it. Because we've been trying to get Gustavo's uh, reverse proposal all day. No work, no luck, no luck at all. Because I was thinking that, oh, we just got to do this, and then bam, good to go. Apparently, Rock has, like, such a major advantage on the beginning of the game that he becomes a very hard default. And I was over here, you know, very confident today, being like, <laughs> we're going to do five world records in one day. <laughs> so we're just going to knock out the one that we know we can do. Super easy. And then after that, we're going to go take a small break, and then we're going to go figure out what the heck we've been missing. Anyways, General, how has your day been there, bud? It's kind of weird to... I don't know why I'm uh, thinking that Sumi made a uh, playing game called uh, Rebel Riders Operation Nighthawk. Uh, I don't think they made that game, no. I don't think they did. They made some interesting NES games, I know that. They made a... Uh... Oh goodness. I'm drawing a blank on it, oh my goodness. I'm drawing such a huge blank on it. Okay, so since we're going for the Rock Z Cheat percent, here's all we gotta do. All we gotta do. Name ourselves, name the farm, name the cow. Go to this whole big dialogue here in the beginning, which is like seven minutes worth of dialogue. That's right, seven minutes worth of dialogue. And, uh, also picking the dog. Picking the dog and naming the dog. And unfortunately with, uh, Takaaru, we cannot match through his dialogue either. It's very slow drawn out. good game uh, that you uh it's a very good game to that uh i texted it oh really you i'm always down for games that have amazing soundtracks no joke that's the only reason the only reason why i ran streets of rage 2 for a little while is because the soundtrack is just so amazing from start to finish i mean come on you start off with the song go left it's it gets you pumped. It's a game that like you get jazz for the moment you get dropped into it, going like, yeah, let's kick some bad guys' heads in. The only reason why I even stopped speedrunning it and stuff was because eh, I just needed a break from it. Name the cow. That's a good name for a cow, I guess. I mean, we guess it's a good name. I mean, I don't know if it is or isn't. <gasps> I will say, though, since the game has been throwing us rock both times we've done this, we might actually not go for reverse marriage category. Or, wait. Reverse marriage. Reverse proposal. Add up on the next go through and stuff. Wait. It's been forever, but, uh, I played it- wait. 
but plants. You play as a uh, squadron called Ghost Leader. Oh! Alright. I think you, uh, you gotta take out enemy ships and drones. Wait, wait, is it kind of like our type? Kind of like Galaga? Like, what way is it set? Is it like you're going left to right shooting things up, or you're going bottom to top shooting things? Because I don't like bullet helps. Like, there are a few games out there that I do not like. I do not like bullet helps at the slightest. Because for me, they get me anxious. Too easy. Too easy. It's a PS2 3D playing game. Oh, okay. Alrighty. The man of your dreams, Gustafa. Yeah, he's he's the one I picked every time playing this casually. Every time, no contest. <coughs> Excuse me. Who? Anyways, Tina, question: What do you get down with? What games do you play? Because I know you said you were talking about. Harvest Moon speedruns on your one of your last streams. Tell me about yourself. I'm not sure, but if you want to check it out, I think there's a few streamers uh, that uh, play it on YouTube, I think. Oh, okay! I mean, I've also been debating on maybe just, like, eh, learning a few Stardew Valley-type runs that are, well, glitchless and stuff because we play up on an updated patch, so we can't just, like, downgrade and stuff on it. And it's 7.50, so first things first, we're gonna go sell cow. Wait. I like life simulators and uh, girl games in the 2000s mostly. How about you, Fair? Oh, me? I love myself some Kirby. Kirby is the most amazing game series to me, ever. So we're gonna go to the Sorry. Swap out for first thing we can find. Yeah, so Kirby games, NES games, like GameCube games, like I am I am mostly a Nintendo uh, streamer. Like, there have been moments I've been branching out from that right there, but I do enjoy the feel of controllers in my hands, so I'm always playing console. Wait. The starting point of the game was kind of cool because... I'll have to read that in the next sleep thing. Because with the main character, you could uh, shoot down enemies and play and the story goes on. Oh! In the main menu. Nice. Very nice. But Stardew Valley, by the way, is my go-to game. If I don't know what I want to do, or if I'm not feeling up that well, I always go to Stardew Valley. That's our go-to thing, Tina. Wait. 
accidentally hit a didn't hit down on that one. Oopsie doodle. No big deal. Another starter recommendation. Oh, totally. If you love Harvest Moon, Tina, you will totally love Stardew Valley. I can guarantee that right there. Stardew Valley, I can say, as someone who's played Harvest Moon games for the better part of 20 years, I can tell you with full utter confidence that Stardew Valley is the spiritual successor to what Harvest Moon used to be. God, I've been playing Harvest Moon games for 20 years. Oh, man. Oh! And Tina, thank you for that follow, Duke Duke Duke! Welcome on in, you good cozy bean. Let's do it. Final level kind of a, has this cool boss or something where uh, war starts and... Ooh, big boss ship. Ooh, nice. Oh, blowing up the Death Star. Oh, but it's a big boss ship. All right. But, uh, yeah, so every now and again, like, we try to find, do, like, new challenge runs and stuff, and this just happened to be the thing I just happened to pick out for the day. We usually stream, eh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, our usual stream days. We start at around, like, 11.30 to midnight, usually. I usually give about, eh, three, four hours, depending on how we're doing, how we're feeling. I can't believe that the Xbox One does not have a the game in the store yet. Which game? Uh, Stardew Valley. I thought it have would have Stardew Valley by now. I mean, it's weird that if it if it doesn't. I mean, I know the people behind Stardew Valley are currently working on another game currently, I believe. Rebel Raiders, you meant? Oh! Alrighty. Well, I mean, hopefully they might add it eventually. I mean, as long as the developers aren't Nintendo and they decide that they're just going to let their legacy collection just sit on a freaking shelf because, you know, why not? But they don't want you to pirate their games because, oh lord, they might decide to go and sell it to you later on. I mean, I'm just saying this. I'm just saying this. If a company is very actively against people pirating their games, very actively against it, and the fans literally tell them, we're willing to pay you money if you put this on your eShop, and they're just like, no, we have no plans to do this for right now, but still don't pirate our games. It's just, it's very infuriating, because the thing is, with a lot of old games, like, some of them are not freaking cheap. I mean, look at Conker's Bad Fur Day. Conker's Bad Fur Day for the N64 is every bit. Yeah, they bring it upon themselves. And they have a, they want to get in the store, but it's a, kind of like it, but it's not it. Ah, all right. Conker's Bad Friday is a hundred twenty plus dollar game. Hundred twenty plus dollar game. It's an amazing rareware title. If you want to play it original hardware, it's that much. I mean, yeah, they have Conquer Live and Reloaded for the, for the Xbox, and I believe it's also technically. You can play it, I believe, on the Xbox One, I think, also, too. But that basically is, you know, kind of bringing the point around to it. I'll actually even go for one that, that's even more closer to home. Banjo-Kazooie 1. You can only get it on the N64, I think. Actually, it was all actually on the Wii, wasn't it? But everything that Nintendo has done to themselves when it comes to their legacy collection is just brought upon themselves. And if they would just be like, oh, hey, this, and worked like the like couple months it took, or have like, you know, have a B team work a couple months on it, 
to just like get the controls figured out and ported and stuff bam good to go it would work it'd be amazing but I get what Nintendo is doing they're playing the long game because they officially put the expansion pass like what was it last year I think it was so you have the online pass then the expansion pass Wait, Banjo Kazooie, that's on the rare collection. All three of them actually. Really? Okay, I'm proven wrong then. I am actually proven wrong. Nice. On the Xbox One, well, I'm actually happy to hear that. So, Nintendo has the expansion pass for their yearly subscription, right? It's like 50 bucks for it. But, you know, you get access to all, you know, the N64 and Sega Genesis games they put on there. The thing is, I feel like they could actually make a lot more money if they were to just put it all as just downloadable games. Like how the Wii Shop was. Remember the Wii Shop? Who remembers the Wii Shop? I remember the Wii Shop. I miss the Wii Shop. The Wii Shop was an amazing thing. Yeah, I, I have it too, but uh, been not playing it much. And also, Viva Pinata games too. <gasps> Did you say Viva Pinata? Chimp, did you know, Chimp, that I am a big sucker for Viva Pinata 1? I'm a very big sucker for Viva Pinata 1. And I'm actually going to be actively looking around my uh, local game shops tomorrow to see if I can find a copy of Eva Pinata 1. Yeah, there's two games on there. Okay. A very important thing. Viva Pinata 1 is a definite yes. Viva Pinata 2? We don't talk about Viva Pinata 2. Viva Pinata 2 is just... It's not as good. It's just... It's meh. It's, it's not good. Best way to put it. They also the two, the two Perfect Dark games. You mean the good Perfect Dark and the bad Perfect Dark? Now, now, I'm probably being too harsh on it. I'm probably being way too harsh on it. But I just... I don't know. I just couldn't get into the second one. Just really couldn't get into it. It just felt not good. It felt rushed. Like, you know what 360 title felt good from beginning to end? Gears of War. Gears of War felt good from beginning to end. And I know I just said, you know, that I like to lean more into the Nintendo games and stuff, but back when I was growing up and stuff, teenage years, actually, wait, teenage years? No, it was actually, oh gosh. Yeah, like, yeah, like late teen years and stuff. Used to love Gears of War. It also has a Mortal Kombat ripoff game too. Oh? I'll never forget, like, it was one week during my senior year. I was out for three days being sick. Out for three days being sick. My buddy Mish. M-I-S-H. He liked to go by Mish because he was from Michigan. Oh, Killer Instinct? Hey. The, uh, the last Killer Instinct they did where you had to buy the characters that was a very, very, very bad move on their part. But I remember Mish, he came over when I was not feeling good and uh, we just sat down we just played Gears of War from beginning to end and just like, you know, like it was nothing and you know, I I kind of miss those days in a way. You get what I mean? I mean, yeah, you know it's amazing that, you know, you can play games with friends online they don't have to be over at your place. And, uh, so, you know, like, they can still be over at their place. They can be all the way around the world. You can have a fun time with them. But I kind of miss the couch co-op feel. You know, having a few buds over, you know, drinking some soda, eating popcorn, goofing off, playing Mario Party or whatever and stuff. Where it felt like a full experience of a day as compared to just what it is now. 
I'm not saying anything bad about like what how things are now. I'm just saying like I miss sometimes just that right there, just the whole getting together, just playing old games together in a group. <laughs> Listen to me go eh, back in my day, right? <laughs> uh. Beep 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 dee dee deep. Sleep sleep sleep. I will say that depending on what time we get on this right here might actually determine if we actually go for the rock nosy cheat. Because if the rock nosy cheat time ends up being not that far as far as Z cheat time ends up being eh, noticeably lower than the the no Z cheat or no Z cheat world record for it. We might just go for that right there. That way we can just have it knocked out like bam and bam. I mean, the cutscene itself is like, what, five minutes long, I think? It's a long cutscene. It's like, whew, way too long of a cutscene. It's kind of weird, too. The Killer Instinct game was on the Rare Collection, too. Had Hath of Fighters. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can actually explain that. I can explain that. What other version, even though... That was called... Oh, okay, so... Originally, what happened with Killer Instinct when it came out, like, the last Killer Instinct game, what they did was, is they had it set to where a few characters were unlocked from the get-go. And you could, you know, just play it that right there and stuff. But they went with the League of Legends business model on it, to where, yeah, cool, you could have those characters right there and stuff, but if you want to play as the other characters, however, you have to pay to unlock them. But then they're permanently unlocked forever. You know, the whole microtransaction thing to where, you know, you basically, you know, you get the game, but you don't have all of the game. Which is just... It bothers me that that happens. That even to this day, it bothers me that that happens. That, you know... You just can't go out and just buy a finished product. But on the other side of that coin right there, it's very nice that developers get more time to work on their titles. So a lot of people sit and think that, oh, you know, that the developers literally have right until like the last minute to work on a game before it goes on the shelves. But the thing is, that's not the case. That's far from the truth because the amount of production time and logistics that go into making sure a game gets shipped worldwide or does heck even even countrywide. Okay, so let's take a moment and think. Well, let's take a moment and just do a little math here. So, how long do you think it would take to make a eh, 100,000 copies of a game? How do you think it'll take a factory to make that? I'm gonna say honestly, if, if it's well streamlined, I'm probably gonna say maybe, maybe we can knock it out in a week, maybe. But with the rare collection too, I never uh, knew uh, that rare had very very old Atari games too. Oh yeah, rare has been around since towards the beginning. So you have like one to two weeks to just, you know, printing the game, packaging the game, putting them in, in the cases that they go into, and shipping them off. There's also design the box art. There's then the logistics of shipping things out to where they need to go to. Making sure they get there on time. And it's just, there's a lot of logistics that goes into it. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. in with you know how like day one updates are we all make the joke about <laughs> you know this game's got a day one update 
That's because the nice thing about gaming today is that the developers still have time to fine-tune little things here and there that they couldn't possibly work on right up to the end of crunch. You know, before it comes out. As compared to like today, or as compared to like the olden days of gaming, once when a game came out, that was it. Who remembers the Metroid game that came out for the Wii? To where if you went back to a certain point in the game after doing a certain thing, you couldn't proceed forward. And back then, the Wii, I don't think... I don't know if they did game updates on the actual Wii or not, but what Nintendo did, all they did, all they did to basically fix the issue is they told their fans, oh, don't do this. That's all they told them. Nowadays, you don't gotta worry about that. You know, you just go, bam, bam, done. The sad thing is the collection has no Donkey Kong games on it. Oh. I can actually explain why there, Chimp. Because... Yes, Rare worked on Donkey Kong, but the thing is, Donkey Kong is a Nintendo-owned intellectual property. Because it's a Nintendo-owned IP, Donkey Kong will never be on anything but a Nintendo system. Correction, apart from Atari. But then again, okay, so... Let me actually recorrect my, my statement. Donkey Kong never be on anything but a Nintendo console up until Nintendo being a company. So anything before Nintendo being a company, it's going to be on the Atari, for example. Sleep, 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 sleep. I feel so brain dead inside. And we gotta be getting close to this. We gotta be getting close. I'm gonna say it's taking a guess thing probably were winter five, I think. So use that to our advantage then and then we're not that far away. I mean I will say this though, on the at least with the proposal category and stuff, it's just a matter of just Go into the person you're proposing to, giving them an item a day, then doing the whole uh, cutscene so they roll around. I mean, that that is nice. At least it's at least it's some movement. Boot time. We gotta be getting close. Like how close are we? We are. Winter 7. Winter 7. at once you're eight now we're about there it's about about time on this sleep yes oh, such good sleep so nice sleep
I know this is still Banjo Kazooie's Nintendo 2. Okay, the thing with that right there is I believe Banjo Kazooie technically fit as. Actually, I don't know how Banjo Kazooie actually. Oh, no, what it was is that technically was something that Rare walked away with at the end. Like how they also walked away technically with, uh, with Conquer. That's if I remember right. I might be wrong. Could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong a few times. I'm not afraid to admit that I'm wrong. <sighs> Finally. <sighs> Finally. So time for this ends. After the proposal cutscene ends. And here it is, the proposal cutscene. Because I don't know if it ends right here, or technically at the end of the chapter, if that makes sense. I will have it go to the end of the chapter and stuff, and then the mods will basically be like, Okay, cool, you know, this is yay or nay on it. You gotta go, alright, well thank you, and thank you for the good luck there, chimp. So the next one we're definitely going to do is we're definitely going to go for Proposal Marlin. Definitely going to go for Proposal Marlin because I cannot, not, I repeat, I cannot have another moment of just sitting there just skipping through days. Scene technically ends uh, when we enter the house, I think.
Like, oh, hey, this is our husband. Wait, why is he coming into the house with us? And... BAM! Yeah, okay! There it is! There it is! 